presence of those two hijackers in San Diego and their intersection with the informant. Obviously, uh, you know, a very fruitful opportunity for exploitation, intelligence information, maybe in the best of all circumstances leading to prevention. Um, it would have been helpful, it would have been helpful for the FBI at that particular point in time uh, to know the names of those two individuals that the information which was generated in the January 2000 uh, physical surveillance, not by the CIA, but by a liaison agency, if that information and the initiation for that surveillance, which were phone calls to a central number, which you're well aware of, which plays a uh, integral role not only in the East African bombings case, but also in the coal investigation, the you know June meeting when uh, three but not all of the photographs were disclosed to FBI agents and the subsequent uh, description of those events. If all of that had worked the way it, uh, it could have worked and that informant uh, as well as informants all over the FBI's domain uh, were tasked to find out information about two specific people, uh, you could have had a completely different... In the fall of 1998, NSA began to focus its analysis on a suspected terrorist facility in the Middle East. That facility had been associated with Al-Qaeda activities against U.S. interests. In early 1999, NSA analyzed communications involving a suspected terrorist facility in the Middle East, some of which were associated with Nawab al-Hazmi and Khalid al-Midar, who NSA believed that Khalid al-Midar had been connected to the Yemen hub. These communications were the first indication NSA had a link between Khalid al-Midar and Nawab al-Hazmi. They were not disseminated in NSA SIGINT reporting because the persons were unknown and the subject matter did not meet NSA reporting thresholds. Those thresholds vary depending on the judgment of the NSA analyst who is reviewing the intercept and the subject, location, and content of the intercept. In early 1999, another organization obtained the same or similar communications and published the information in a report it gave to NSA. NSA's practice was to review such reports and disseminate those responsive to U.S. intelligence requirements. For an undetermined reason, NSA did not disseminate the report. It was not until early 2002, during the joint inquiry, that NSA realized that it had the report in its databases and subsequently disseminated it to CIA and other customers. No additional activity of counterterrorism interest was associated with the suspected terrorist facility in the Middle East until summer 1999, when NSA analyzed additional communications involving Walid bin Atash, also known as Khalid, Khalid al-Midar, and Nawab al-Hazmi. At about the same time, the name Khalid came to the attention of the NSA for the first time. NSA analyzed communications associated with a suspected terrorist facility in the Middle East from later in the summer of 1999. These communications also involved the names of Khalid and others. None of this information was disseminated because the subject matter did not meet NSA reporting thresholds. In late 1999, NSA analyzed communications associated with a suspected terrorist facility in the Middle East involving Nawab al-Hazmi, Wali bin Atash, and for the first time, Salim. It was thought at that time that Salim might be al-Hazmi's younger brother, and this was later confirmed. In early 2000, NSA analyzed what appeared to be related communications between Khalid and redacted. NSA reported this information in early January to CIA, FBI, and other counterterrorism customers. After this NSA report, CIA submitted a formal request to NSA in early 2000 
for approval to share information in the report with redacted foreign intelligence liaison services, along with the fact that Khalid may have been connected to a suspected terrorist facility in the Middle East that had previously been linked to Al-Qaeda's activities against U.S. interests. CIA wanted to cite these connections to enlist liaison assistance redacted. On January 10th, the Counterterrorism Center at CIA gave NSA information regarding the Kuala Lumpur meeting, including information about Khalid Al-Midar, the name of the person who assisted him in Kuala Lumpur, and the fact that Al-Midar's primary purpose in coming to Malaysia appeared to have been to meet with others and other information. In early 2000, NSA analyzed communications involving Khalid and a suspected terrorist facility in the Middle East linked to al-Qaeda's activities directed against U.S. interests. The FBI determined, based on toll records it obtained after September 11th, that Khalid had been in the United States at the time. Some of these communications met NSA reporting thresholds and were reported to FBI, CIA, and other customers, but some did not. NSA analyzed additional communications in the summer of 2000 that were associated with a suspected terrorist facility in the Middle East, Salim al-Hazmi and Khalid, redacted. NSA did not believe this provided any new information, and there was no dissemination. <laughs>